particular, if you would. <clears throat> so Chair Larson has called the meeting to order already at 9.01. To remind everybody to state where you're participating from, where you're currently located. Okay. I'm gonna go through the attendance. Juliet Ballard. Juliet Ballard, Dexter, Michigan. Marta Larson. Northfield Township, Michigan. Marie Gress. Present, calling from Dexter, Michigan. Margaret Reynolds. Present from Pittsfield Township. Elizabeth Thompson. Present from Ypsilanti Township. Jennifer Green. Present from the city of Ypsilanti. Phyllis Herzig. Present from Ann Arbor. Um, Jennifer Heckendorn. Present calling from Palm Coast, uh, Florida. Wow, you're still in Florida? I've been back. <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> yes. My goodness. Ms. Brenda McKinney. Present, Superior Charter Township. And I do have two excused absences from Ms. Jasmine Cooper and Commissioner Somerville. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, this time, um, it's time for public participation. I see that there are a number of people in the audience. Um, if there's anyone in the audience that would like to address the Commission on Aging, would you please raise your hand and you'll be called on one at a time. <clears throat> I see no hands up. This is your last chance to raise your hand if you wish to speak uh, and, and during the call to the public. Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll close that um, public participation section of the agenda. And we obviously don't need a commission response to public participation because there was none. Um, so it's now time to take a look at the minutes and uh, approve them. Do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. Support. Okay, that the motion has been brought and supported to approve the minutes from November 3rd, 2023. Um, is there any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, uh, would you call the roll, please, Taylor? Julia Ballard. Yes. Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Yes. Margie Reynolds. Yes. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Jennifer Green. Yes. Phyllis Herzig. Yes. Jennifer Hackendorn. Yes. Brenda McKinney. Yes. Passes. Okay, minutes are approved. Um, our discussion items, first item on the agenda is the um, annual report. You ha should have received a, a, the final draft of that. Um, is uh, Who is going to lead this discussion? I've lost track here. Um, I guess I will with, okay, for the communications ahead, committee. I'll turn the chair over to you and you can call on people as you wish. Uh, Thanks so much to, to everybody on the communications committee for uh, helping with this, especially Jennifer Heckendorn who formatted it. So it looks so nice. Uh, I hope you all had a chance to take a look at it. Um, Taylor, would you be able to bring it up on the, share it on the screen? Everybody can see it? I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as with uh, past annual reports, um, our chair is going to formally submit it to the um, commission, uh, the board of commissioners um, in person. And Marta, do you? know yet if you're on the schedule um 
I am um, negotiating with Ashley to schedule that. Um, she had originally thought maybe I could get on the schedule in December, and that turns out not to be the case. So it will be in January or February. Okay, so um, it'll be presented in person to the Board of Commissioners where they will have a chance to ask in-person questions. Um, hopefully, once we know when the scheduled presentation is, um, folks will be able to put it on their calendar so uh, we can appear at the meeting either in person or virtually to, to show our support. Uh, but going down, uh, we summarize the objectives that we've been working on. And again, folks made comments at the last meeting that the committee incorporated. And then if you could go down a little bit further, uh, to the, you'll see that we keep going on the objectives and uh, we also list all the presentations we've had, as well as the committees. Uh, does anybody have any suggestions? Could you go back up to the top again? As you know, um, because much of what we did is learning from our wonderful presenters. There is an active link uh, there, which will allow folks to actually go to the recordings of our meetings and see the presentations. And I understand, Taylor, you've been able to work uh, with uh, the county and uh, they're all on the website. And I see a couple hands. I don't know who came first. So Margaret, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, thank you. Um, the report is so well done. I, I appreciate your work. Um, the, the one thing thought I had is um, objective two with MAP funds supporting the aging sector. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't know quite where we are with that, but it's, uh, it's totally been ignored. And I can't remember whether the if somebody's pursuing that uh, or we're we're working on that in some respect. But um, I thought maybe a little stronger statement. Um, uh, this I think this is the second time we've put that in our report. I'm not certain. Okay, we have sent a memo to the board of. Uh commissioners again uh asking for that information evidently the board of commissioners is going to be working uh with uh the ann arbor area community foundation uh to gather both broad generally uh information about spending related to older adults throughout the county, as well as the specific county funds. Um, so I'm hearing you say that you want stronger uh, language. Well, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I think that might be helpful, you know, I, I I think one of the things that has happened is that, um, uh, you know, we're a, a commission and we're commission commissioners, and yet I think we're there are several instances where we have been ignored or um, uh, denied, whatever, uh, and. I don't think that comes through on our report and I don't know whether people want it to, but um, I don't know. I, I'd be interested in what other people think about that. Okay. Then as we go through and I call on other people, if, if someone has a thought about whether the annual report is the place to make that 
concern yeah. known, they can speak to it. Um, Marie. Um, so to follow up on that first, we could just invert the sentence. So lead with the COA again requested that the BOC task, da, 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 comma, emphasizing the importance of knowing how the funds, so we're not changing any of the language at this point, but we, we're leading with we've again requested instead of it being in the center there. Um, I wanted to ask if we could make the first paragraph um, in a black font instead of the gray and the objectives looks like a gray. So if we could make those black and then on the second page, yep, that one. Sorry, I'm also taking notes and sharing screens. <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> Come on, Taylor. I know. Uh, right? No, that's totally fine. Um, because we have some space after the presentations, I was wondering if we could add um, an enter after Marta's signature before the divider line and another can we, can we see that? We can't. Okay. Yeah, so put um, after aging, have an extra line there before the divider, and then before presentate between the divider and presentations, have an additional line there. So it just gives a little space between the two sections, and it fills up oh, the yeah. bottom of that page a little bit. I see what you're saying, an extra space Yeah. after aging. Uh-huh. Okay. But that's all. Thank you so much for your guys' work on this. Uh, I did it the last two years, so I know that it's it's a lot of work. So thank you very much. <laughs> I have a question real fast. Do you guys yeah. want me, are we going to adopt these changes or would you like me to make comments on this one or to do these changes or how do you want me to do it? I think we should make a list of the proposed changes and then um, after we vote, um, then uh, Taylor, especially since we don't have um, quite the time push that we thought we did because Marta won't be on the agenda next week, um, we can work through and put them in. So just okay. if you could just make sure that you're writing down the comments and I know Jennifer and I are keeping track. Wonderful. Marta, yeah. do you Marta, you had a comment. Um, yeah, I wanted to speak to the um, fund mapping. Um, <clears throat> Commissioner Somerville let me know that she was not able to be present today, but she did provide a report on the general funds, uh, on the fund mapping project. And I think that the memo we sent to the Board of Commissioners clarifying what we wanted is what sprung this information loose because I think it turned out to be a far less complicated process than they were thinking. So um, we have that information now, but I'm still in support of the proposal to reverse the two phrases about fund mapping. I think that's a good idea. Can we go back to that part, fund mapping? Um... <clears throat> so the suggestion is beginning it uh, to read, the COA again requested that the BOC task the county administrator to map public funds, comma, emphasizing the importance of knowing how county funds are being currently spent on older adults. I do think that that's a great suggestion, Marie, because it puts the issue Margaret raised up front that we again requested. Will that be another sentence added at the end? No, it's just flipping the two phrases. Okay. Okay. And Brenda, did you have other comments or concerns? I wanted to go back to Margaret when she said we need to make this stronger. Uh, um, did you have any suggestions, Margaret, uh, how we need to do that? Or what we Margaret need to says say? The, uh, Marie's suggestion meet your... Well, I yeah, I, I think so. I had thought about that myself, but um, I wanted to more or less introduce it to the group and see if they even if they feel that's an issue and um so i'm i'm satisfied with marie's suggestion okay, great um just reversing yeah. it right yeah 
Okay. Okay, Brenda, did you have anything else? No, I, I just wanted to ask Margaret, what did she suggest or recommend? But she just explained it, that she's satisfied okay. with just reversing. Thank you. Okay, Phyllis. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, I, I like the idea of reversing those phrases. Um, I guess I felt similar t to Margaret's, um, Margie's comments about um, we've been waiting for information and it's not coming. And I was looking at the explore potential millage for senior services. Um, a, last year, we uh, that committee had asked the members of um, the Commission on Aging what information people would need in order to move forward with this. And it, it had to do with where was money being spent at this so far. Um, and so it, when I read this, I'm not sure what merit-based ballot means. Is that um is that to distinguish between that universal millage that could be spent on any um areas of of concern that the uh, board of commissioners might have versus a designated um senior services millage I, I just am not sure what this sentence means. And I um, wonder if there's Marta, some clarification. Marta, I don't want to uh, misinterpret that as your wording. Do you uh, want to clarify merit-based? Merit-based, in my opinion, means looking at what the county is already spending and what's already happening in the county, and then taking those factors into account, determining whether a millage is actually needed. How is that different from the mapping funds? I think the mapping funds is part of the information that would be included in merit based. So we needed we we at one point decided we needed to know what the county was already spending and then to take that into account along with what's being done elsewhere in the county with with non-county funds. Once we have all those together, then we will know whether we believe there's um, merit to requesting a ballot initiative. I'm wondering if because of the use of merit based in many other contexts, which is often used when um, as a substitute for needs based eligibility for funds, I think we're maybe trying to take a much broader idea that can't really be summarized in the report. I wonder if we just had it read, explore the possibility of a ballot request and remove merit-based, which I agree, Phyllis, tends to be confusing because merit-based can based can have different meanings depending on the context. I, I think that would be helpful. Um, and I wonder if if there's a way of um, including that the uh, the understand for this for our body to reach a um, decision on a recommendation, it need it is waiting on the map the map funds report and the map of funds report as well as the um uh Annaber, uh yeah area community foundation uh strategic initiative there phyllis i think that's a very important question which should be on the agenda for the future because that is obviously as 
we've gotten some of the information we requested, as Marta alluded to, as will be coming in. I think we need to make a decision about what our recommendation as a commission may be. But I think that that is unquestionably um, a future action item while we're just dealing with what we have done in the past. Does that make sense? Well, because we have not officially taken a position. I understand that. And the reason to my understanding is that we're waiting for a various reports to um, inf um, inform our ideas. Um, and one being this delay from the uh, Board of Commissioners uh, or the administrator in terms of what money has been spent to date or where money is being spent to date. Um, because it, we have heard from so many uh, senior agencies that they spend an unreasonable amount of time and energy going after funding and and the the people who need the services are not getting the services because there isn't time and energy left to provide the services and they and there isn't funding to to cover those so i i think you know kicking the can down the road and down and down and down is hurting the very people that we are trying to help so um i wonder if we can phyllis uh, respectfully i would say um that 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 is a key issue that the commission needs to address and um, needs to be on our agenda. But this is a report of what we have done in the past year, and we but, have not done what you've asked. Right. So and and, I, make and a I wonder if we to, could if we... that's a request to have as an agenda item at the next meeting? I think that would be good. I wonder if we can phrase it in a way that says we we have been, um, what's the word, um, hindered in, in making our, having our discussion because of waiting for other information to come. I because think that that's, that, that, that is has not... happened this year. That that is the history of of 2023. We we have uh, as a subcommittee we have looked into this. So it, the commission, our commission, has not ignored it and and put it off completely. It's just that we haven't received um, the requested map of funds nor have uh, uh, nor has this um, uh, community foundation initiative been finished in time for us to explore um, Phyllis, I think I that, that would Maybe be a I'm, I'm alone in this thinking, which is okay. That would be a substantive change to the annual report. So Marta, as the chair, please correct me if my procedural thinking is, is wrong. I would think that you would have to make a motion with specific wording to include in that, and then we would need to vote to include that or not. Is that, Marta, you're the chair. How should we proceed? She agrees. 
So if you want to craft specific wording that you want to add to the annual report, then MARTA will take a vote. We will take a vote on that because that is a substantive change. All the other changes we've met, we've discussed our formatting and minor editorial changes. Okay, well, I, I don't know. I know that we, it, this was brought up at the previous meeting as something that we as a commission have been exploring, so. And that's why that, uh, section has been added. While you're thinking about that, Brenda has her hand up. Yeah, I um, we skipped over two, um, two bullet points that we haven't discussed. Can we go back to those? What's your busy? concern? This, um, let's see, we finished. Can you take it back up? Um, we did um, the mapping and then uh, the ARPA funds support development of countywide services to aging adults. Um, I'm, we didn't discuss that. I'm satisfied with that. But we haven't talked about that part, that when we skipped over okay, that. Okay, the point of this is we did discuss at the last presentation of content, and you had opportunities to add uh, between the last meeting this specific suggestions. Mm -hmm. We did not receive other than the request for adding the um, millage, which was discussed at the last meeting. So. I'm not sure we need to review word for word for this unless you have a particular no no concern. I was just no I don't have a concern I'm basically saying I like it but I didn't okay. hear anyone else comment about it Marie you have a hand up Juliet's hand was raised before mine so you can do I'm her. sorry I'm not seeing because of the way this is set up. I couldn't see oh, your okay. hand, Juliet. So I apologize. Oh, your thank name. you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Marie. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking this document, um, this progress report is put together to discuss our progress um, and what we've accomplished in the past year. I do agree that there is a need for another form of communication. However, um, I think that the bullet that states provide data on gaps in services and programs and the things that we have done and accomplished are appropriate. I think that we need to determine another way to communicate via report or a letter or whatever we need that addresses our concerns outside of this document. I think each document has a purpose. I think this um, document uh, I'm not going to speak for Marta, but if my signature was at the bottom, I prefer for it to stay um, in the context in which it's supposed to be provided uh, and then find another way. I think all of our concerns are valid and the things that have been presented are valid, extremely valid. However, I, however, I think I wouldn't want to put um, those concerns or inadequacies on our progress report. Um, I think mm -hmm. that they should be articulated in another way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, mm -hmm. thank you. And again, I apologize if I miss somebody. How my Zoom shows up is I cannot see everybody's raised hand uh, because we're screen sharing. So uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, we can't, I can't see your face either. I think if you Put your screen. No, if I scroll, I can uh, do that. But if you um, put your screen down a bit, we could see your face. No, you have to. It all depends on how your Zoom shows. Mm -hmm. anyway, I have my I'm just apologizing list. for not seeing somebody's hand. Uh, yeah, no one else's hand is in front of mine now. I have my okay, participant Marie. list open, um, and so that's how I I saw her hand. 
Um, so on November 15th, the Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners actually gave an additional 500,000 to senior services. And while that wasn't something we directly asked for, we had been pushing for more than 4 million to the um, aging services. So I just wondered if we wanted to adjust the 3.8 million on there to, to be um, 4.8 will that be 4.3 million? Can was you scroll from, up to that? Was it from ARPA funding, Marie? Yes, yes, it was ARPA funding. Then I think that that would be appropriate factual edit to make it 4.3. Except, no, we need to add it on because the census which received approval in September, and then I suggest we add an, an additional 500,000, which received approval in November. Yeah, sounds good. And that was ARPA funds, Marie, that you got? Yep. Okay. Does that mean, by the way, Marie, that they're not going to be sending out another RFP? Correct. What they did is they reached out to agencies directly. Um, uh, agencies who came up during that initial, the initial saga. <laughs> um, and then um, they, yeah, so they were reaching out individually to the agencies they felt like needed more or the, the geographic areas that needed more. They are not releasing a, a formal RFP um, to my knowledge. So Marie, was that part of that 200,000 that they kept Mm hmm. Yep. So they because of our memo that clarifying what we meant uh, about fund mapping, they weren't and because of the work being done by the area agent, I'm sorry, the um, uh, community Ann Arbor Community Foundation, they mm -hmm. did not need to hold back that 200,000. So they put that back on the table with an additional 300,000 of ARPA funds in Got order it. to support yeah, the areas that um, were underrepresented. Got it, got mm -hmm. it, okay. So are people generally in support of about expanding that sentence to read with an additional 500,000, which received approval in November? I am, yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. that is an editorial thing. Are there any other comments? Elizabeth, I have one. I can't raise my hand though, because I'm sharing. Um, just right here, this vacant and district, it doesn't match everything else. If you wanted to put like an extra space and then. Oh, I see district. For district eight. eight being vacant. vacant. That, that's a good point. Or put vacant and then district underneath. So it matches. Yeah, like yes. Does. Thank you, Taylor. Mm -hmm. I also had another comment to try to help with this one, potentially make it past tense, like explored potential millage for seniors, the COA asked the Board of Commissioner to continue to explore? Yeah, we, uh, Taylor, it's all present tense. Okay. So does anybody have uh, other comments? Phyllis, do you have a formal um, amendment? Yeah, want... I guess I was confused in terms of the tense. If this is a report of the past year, then um, I- These are our objectives, the objective, which have historically been in present tense. I see, and, okay. And the, and the description of the objective is- Is what we've done in tense. response to it. But, but, the, but, but the one we were just talking about, the COA supported, that's past tense. The so how we, it's working, if I'm, and please correct me, other members of the committee, if you have different understanding, in bold is our objectives, which as an action yeah. item is present tense because we're continuing to but, act but on an objective. You, the yeah. following material is what we did in the past year. I, and I, 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 I realize that. So the advert advocate for allocations, um, the one we were just talking about, the, the, the um, 
unbolded or the uh, whatever that sentence is called, the COA supported the yes. proposals submitted. So that that was past tense. Yes. And I'm wondering if this uh, uh, the senior millage objective could have a sentence with past tense also that we we did not take official action and I, I know we didn't accept no. that there was a committee that met for the year and 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 it it did ask for the board of commissioners to um to provide information so if you have a formal amendment to that if you could please put it in writing we can vote on it i i hear your point that you've it just, the way it says now it's like you're not emphasizing the millage enough the issue of the millage enough that I would say reflecting on our past discussions in the past year, that has not been the major part of our work. If that is where the our commission wants to focus on in the coming year, that should be agenda items for the future and a decision. And the reason I'm being in the middle about this is you may have realized there are varying views amongst our membership about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the advisability of having a senior millage. We I are not united. We asked, we asked early on, at least six months ago, we asked every member of this commission what information they needed to make a decision for a recommendation. And the only comment that I heard, the only information that was expressed, uh, was asked for was where has money gone in the past? What is the county covering at this point? And in the meanwhile, we have a subcommittee that Phyllis, has I know that I'm interrupting you, but we also have a presentation. So, so it is right. clear well, to me you're not satisfied with how this is phrased. If you can come up with phrasing that you can submit as a formal amendment, we can vote on it. Our task is to, by the end of this meeting, approve the final report so it can be presented to the Board of Commissioners because this is our last meeting of the year. Would it, would it work to say the Commission on Aging asked, past tense, the Board of Commissioners to continue to explore the possibility of a ballot request, taking out the merit-based, putting in past tense. And that, I think that is an accurate statement. But, and so I- Okay, is that your proposal for amendment? Uh, yes. Do we have a second on that? Could you take down the, um, Screen share, please, Taylor. Thanks, and I could see him. Do we have a second on that? Could you repeat it, please? Um, so... Marta, our chair, who's much more versed in uh, how meetings should be conducted, has her hands up, and I suspect she wants to weigh in. You You're on mute, have... Marta. Sorry, I was muted so I wouldn't be coughing and interrupting. Um, the um, I think that's a minor edit, and I think changing the present tense asked to to past tense asked is a minor <clears throat> edit. 
and I think I don't think we need a motion for that. I think we can okay. I can edit unless people, if someone disagrees. But are people agreeable with that? Can you show by either head nod or a thumbs up? Okay. We got one, two, three, four. I've seen one, two, three, four, five thumbs ups. Yeah, everybody's. Okay, so changing it to past tense and yes. taking near at base ballot. With that, are there any other comments? Marta, I'm there's no more discussion. I'll turn this back to you for further action then. Okay. So what we've done is we've made a number of minor edits and I'm gonna to try to summarize them. Uh, we'll see how I do. Um, we have um, corrected the formatting on the list of members for District 8 uh, to make sure it matches the rest of the list. We've corrected the formatting on the text, uh, the introductory text on the first page from gray to black. Um, we've reversed the set the phrases under map funds supporting the aging sector. Um, we have added a phrase and an additional $500,000 improved in November to the uh, allocations from the county commissioners uh, section. We have amended the potential millage for senior services um, to make that past tense and remove the words merit based. And we've added a little bit of space on the second page between my signature and the list of presentations. Does anybody have anything else that we have edited? Did I get everything? Oh, we'll want to add this presentation in it, right? For today? Oh, it's there. Oh, my yes. Bad. I'm sorry, what? Taylor said, said we need to add comment. the name of this presentation. It's already on there. Today's presentation. It's already on there. Yep, my bad. Any other? Did I characterize it properly? <clears throat> okay, so we're, at this point, um, the process is I will ask for a motion and a support and then we will vote and then Taylor will make those edits and send it to the group of us and we will have it uh, to submit to the county commission and I believe Ashley is the one who sends that to the county commission. Um, so there's some more to talk about on that but first let's get this um, report out of the way. Um, Elizabeth you had your hand up. Um, this is act I'd like to say something after the vote. Oh okay. That's cool. So at this point, it's time for a motion to uh, adopt the annual re the annual progress report for 2023. So move. Do we have a support? Support. Okay, so I see Marie as a support. Margaret moved. Marie supported. And so, ever is there any more discussion? Okay, then I will ask Taylor to call the roll. Juliet Ballard. Yes. Marga Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Yes. Margie Reynolds. Yes. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Jennifer Green. Yes. Phyllis Herzig. Yes. yes. Jennifer Hackendorn. Yes. Brenda McKinney. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Um, let's see, Elizabeth, you had something you wanted to say, but I want to also add that um, Jasmine Cooper submitted a draft of an email that we might send to our county commissioners with the report. Is that what you wanted to speak about, Elizabeth? Yes. Okay, go for it. Um, Jasmine Cooper on our committee has a draft of an email that uh, we'll share that can be used to email a copy of this report to your own county commissioner. The, I think we all shared the frustration. I've heard voiced in our discussion that we feel like the board of commission members are not listening to us and responding quickly for our request for information or adequately perhaps. And, one of the ways we can keep advocating for the needs of seniors is 
keep trying to communicate to our individual county commissioner the importance of issues and keep pushing that discussion. So the communications committee would like to ask you to when we send that email out to you, and you can certainly reshape it if you want, as an individual, send that to your commissioner and also try to discuss the contents of this report with your commissioner. And as it is a report of what we've done in the year, you may want to uh, share it as a document with um, the people you work with who have similar concerns about senior services. Okay, so you will get uh, an email um, once Taylor has made their recommended edits and this draft uh, email that you will, you, the text of the email that Jasmine put forward will also be included in that email so you can take it and adopt it for your own use. Adapt it, I should say, for your own use. Margaret? Um, <clears throat> I'm just wondering if there are a number of other people in the community that we should send it to. And I'm thinking of um, uh, people who are uh, intensely involved in, in the services to older adults. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there are others. Uh, I don't know whether we do that after the presentation to the Board of Commissioners or we can do it at this time. Um, but I, I think maybe we can communicate that uh, a little better and uh, more broadly. Yeah, I think we'll um, ask the Communications Committee to come up with a strategy on that. Marta, okay. do you... Um, want to formally present it, given that they're not going to have you on the agenda until possibly February, do you think we need, um, do we need to wait or does just written communication count as presentation to the board? I think both, my, it's my opinion. It needs to be both given to them. If they have it in advance, maybe they'll read it before they report in person and maybe then they'll have questions or comments. Um, so I guess what I'm asking is, is it appropriate for the communications committee to develop a strategy that would share this before your presentation? Oh, I see what you're to saying. To the Board of Commissioners. I'm sorry, I wasn't real clear. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> um, okay, we will get back to you, everybody. <laughs> You'll figure it out, Elizabeth. <laughs> what? Elizabeth will figure it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My opinion, I think we should, um, before we put it, make it public, we should, this is just my opinion, make sure the commissioners see it first. Well, maybe we should ask Ashley to send it to the all, all members of the Board of Commissioners prior mm -hmm. to um, once we have a final version, mm -hmm. in addition to each one of us sending a copy to our, our existing local county commissioner. Mm -hmm. That should satisfy that, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Anything else on the annual report? Okay, cool. So let's move ahead. We have a presentation and our presenter has been waiting patiently for the last 45 minutes while we had a discussion. And uh, so I would like to welcome um, Maddie Riemenschneider from Lori's Hands. She is the chapter manager of Lori's Hands in Southeast Michigan. And I'm gonna um, ask Taylor if you would promote her to panelist so she can speak. Maddie, um, how would you like to proceed? Would you like to have questions as you go or would you like to have people wait until you finish speaking? 
Good morning. Um, I am happy to do either way. Um, it can be collaborative. So if you have questions as you go, feel free to raise your hand and I can um, stop and speak on it. Okay, then I'm gonna turn the floor over to you and let you handle the question and answer. Um, and when you're finished, let me know and I'll take the chair back. Perfect, so thank you. So I'm gonna share my screen this morning just so you can see my slides. Um, and thank you again for having me this morning. I'm really excited to just be able to share a little bit about our nonprofit called Lori's Hands with you all today. So um, as you mentioned, my name is Maddie Riemann Schneider. I am the chapter manager of Lori's Hands here in Metro Detroit. Um, so a little bit about Lori's Hands mission. What we do is we build mutually beneficial partnerships between community members with chronic illness and college students. We foster empathy, connection, and resilience. The students provide practical assistance to support community members' independence at home, and the community members share their health and their life experiences to support the students' learning. So I'll go really, really briefly into our history, um, but just to provide some context, Lori's Hand started out on the East Coast in 2009. We were inspired, um, our founder, her name is Sarah, and Sarah grew up with her mom, Lori, who had breast cancer. Um, Lori ultimately did pass from her breast cancer when Sarah was a freshman in high school, um, but Sarah really had this lived experience of seeing what chronic illness is like at home and seeing the impact of that on the family as well. So when Sarah went off to college, she studied nursing and she had this idea when she was on campus at the University of Delaware and she said, or she had this idea of well, college students have really unique schedules and I'd love to give back and help folks like my mom who have chronic condition in the community. So that's where the idea of Lori's Hands began. Um, so it started off as a nonprofit and we have grown a lot since then, which I will share on the next screen and not dive into too much detail again. So we started as a student club and then became a nonprofit in 2011. Since then, we've had a lot of growth, some new staff members. We went and expanded to Baltimore in 2020 and then just Michigan last year in 2022. Um, so a lot of forward momentum and a lot of growth in since we started in 2009. So our model is we connect with two college students who will visit one community member each week. So the college students are typically studying things related to healthcare, so nursing students, social work students, OT, pre-med, et cetera. Um, and the community member has chronic illness such as cancer, Parkinson's, ALS, et cetera. And they do end up mostly being older adults. Um, so the students will get to go in and visit a community member each week for at least a semester. And this is really essential to their learning and their education. What they're learning in the classroom, they get to take into the community and practice those skills um, and help out a community member. So these weekly visits, they assist, the students can assist with daily tasks that are made difficult by disease. So for example, someone with COPD, if they're on oxygen 24 seven, doing something like running the vacuum can be extremely difficult. So having two students go in and run the vacuum and another student's talking with them and learning about their life, um, it's a really beneficial program for both, both parties involved. And then the students get to learn about the realities of chronic illness. So let's say there's a nursing student who is doing a clinical rotation at a hospital. If they see patients, the patients are in and out in 15 minutes. This is an ex uh, experience for the students to get to learn from a community member week after week, develop that relationship and rapport with them. Um, and it's an ongoing relationship that's built between the students and the community members. So some of the benefits, um, the clients report. So the clients report that their isolation and loneliness is reduced through our programming. Um, they also find that the students are providing instrumental support. So IADLs, things like vacuuming or grocery shopping or um, meal prepping, things like that, that can be made more difficult by chronic illness, the students are able to help with. Um, and then also that intergenerational connectedness piece. So having students come in and bring energy to their home each week and have great conversations with, um, that can be really impactful for our clients. 
And then on the student side, I did touch on this a little bit, but just preparing for their careers and getting to work with older adults. We've had students who they're, let's say, in occupational therapy, and before they start with Lori's Hands, they're certain they want to work with kids. And then after they get to develop that relationship with their older adult in the community, they're like, oh, maybe this is an avenue that I'd like to explore a little bit more. Um, so preparing for their careers, getting to practice communication skills, learning about different resources in the community that could help their clients. So that's a big piece of, you know, they'll go in and see that their client maybe is having a hard time accessing food. So connecting them with programs like Meals on Wheels or the Area Agency on Aging. Um, so the students are getting to learn about this firsthand by their work with their clients. Um, and then also the students really benefit from the intergenerational connectedness as well. So students will often say that, you know, the only older adults that they interact with are their grandparents. So this is a great way to just connect generations and provide more of a sense of community within within their school and education, but also just their life. So our Metro Detroit chapter, we cover both Washtenaw and Wayne County. Um, we have had 97 clients to date. So all of them are older adults. Um, even though Lori's Hands, we don't only service older adults. That just is how our numbers happen to shake out here in this chapter. And we have had between the split of Washtenaw and Wayne County, 55 older adults to date um, in Washtenaw County specifically. For students, we've had 143 students participate in our program since we started last year. Um, that number is growing quite a lot. Um, just as each semester comes, we have new students sign up. We just started a registered student organization on Eastern Michigan University's campus. Um, so a lot of growth and upwards in numbers as of recently. And then you will see we do have quite a lengthy wait list as well. So as we started just last year, word of mouth has gone quite rapidly, which is a great thing. Um, but it also means that we have a wait list in Washtenaw County of older adults. There are currently 57 folks um, who are waiting for our services. So needing to get more students involved to be able to service the older adults. Here are some of our academic partners in Washtenaw County specifically. Um, so I'll start with the bottom. So Eastern Michigan University is actually where we started our Michigan chapter. So it started with a partnership between some School of Social Work professors, and that is the grant that we initially got funding for to come to Michigan. Um, so we've had a lot of success in Eastern and branching out into different programs and departments. So you'll see a list of different majors of students that we have. Um, some of our partnerships are more formalized. So for example, the nursing school, they have used Lori's Hands as their clinical rotation site for their community health and nursing course. So the students who, I think they're in their last year or last semester of their senior year, and they're visiting community members and older adults each week as a part of their nursing rotation. So that's a really exciting partnership. We're growing a lot within Eastern, and I'm really excited about that. Um, we also partner with Washtenaw Community College. You'll see some different majors and programs that we have of students. And then we are also partnered with the University of Michigan, specifically the School of Public Health and the School of Social Work. Um, so hoping to branch out into more um, schools within U of M, because as we all know, U of M is a beast and it's massive. Um, so just yeah, doing a lot of recruitment and meetings with professors to grow our program and have more student engagement throughout our county. And then just briefly, our demographics here of our clients specifically. So on the left-hand side, this is Washtenaw County as a whole for our demographics. And on the right, um, that chart shows our clients in Washtenaw County. So you'll see one quick example is Washtenaw County has a 12.4% population who identify as black and Lori's hands clients. We have in Washtenaw County about 31.8% of clients who identify as black. Um, so just trying to work with and expand our diversity within Lori's hands and making sure that we're reaching all sorts of folks and audiences um, for our programming. 
And then here is the gender breakdown for our clients in Washtenaw County. So Washtenaw is pretty split 50 50. Um, Lori's Hands clients are major a majority of female identifying clients. So 72% of our clients are female. And then this is the age breakdown for our clients. Um, so the largest amount of clients are in the 70 to 80 years old range. We do have a handful of clients who are over 100 years old, and you'll see the different breakdowns there. 22% um, between 80 and 90, 22% between 60 and 70. Um, so largely serving the older adult community, as I mentioned before. And then as far as client diagnoses, um, you'll see a list here, and it is kind of a tricky thing to put into a chart because a lot of our clients have comorbidities and multiple diagnoses. So this isn't completely all encompassing, but you'll see um, arthritis and osteoporosis, diabetes, chronic pain, pulmonary disease, Alzheimer's, cancer. Those are a lot of the more common diagnoses that our students um, go and visit community members with. So I guess I waited till the end to do questions because I didn't have many moments of pause. So I apologize for that. Um, but I'm happy to discuss any of those, you know, any of the information that I talked about, really looking to just engage more with um, Washtenaw County in general and just be able to share more about our program and the work that we're doing, especially since we're so new here. Um, but really excited to share this with you all today and just continue to spread the word. Um, so yeah, any, I will stop sharing my screen here, but I'll also put my email and phone number in our website in the chat um, if anyone has questions, but happy to open it up, answer questions as we go. Can you put your number, your phone number up again? I would like to. I'll send that out. Maddie, just e I'll email you later to get an updated version of the slide and I will send out your email and contact info as well. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I was going to put it in the chat and then I realized I don't think I have nope. access to the chat, so I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I will, yeah, I will certainly email that to you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Brenda? Um, would you be available? We're going to have a town hall June 14th, 2024. <laughs> would you be available to attend and share your information at the, our town hall? I, off the top of my head, don't think I have anything going on on June 14th. Um, Can you put that on I your will, I will double check. I think I should be free. Definitely would love to participate in that town hall. Okay. I will be contacting you so you can put that on your calendar, please. Perfect. Yeah, um, Margaret. Um, well, thank you for presenting. This is um, uh, inspiring uh, to see college students working with older adults. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about um, how many students staff you have? How are you funded? Um, uh, do you do you need support? How, how, do you hope to grow? Um, Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I can speak to all that. So I am the sole staff member here in Michigan um, for Lori's Hands. We do have a team of six staff members um, throughout the country, most on the East Coast. Um, but we do work very collaboratively. So, for example, our executive director, Zach, he's actually on this call. Um, he's driving home from Michigan right now. So he was just with us this week. We had an event yes, or Wednesday now um, at like an end of year celebration event. So we are very supported by leadership, by Lori's hands, but I am the only staff member here in Michigan. Um, as far as funding, we are predominantly grant funded, um, but also individual donors um, and private parties, things like that. So yeah, looking for growth, looking for more funding always as nonprofit as nonprofits go. Um, and having a lot of exciting conversations with folks about growth and what that looks like and how we can continue to engage more community members. Um, we've seen you know, since our start in Delaware and now Baltimore and Michigan, that this model does work and it really does improve lives and make a huge difference in our community. Um, so just looking for ways that we can expand upon that 
in whatever means that we're able to. Do you, sort of as a follow-up, do you get referrals from, uh, how do you get your clients? That, yeah, so we, when I started in 2022, um, initially not many people knew about us, not surprisingly, because we were just starting. Um, but prior to my position here, I worked as a social worker in a hospital. So definitely worked in that space with um, community partners, organizations, making referrals, doing discharge planning, all of that. So I spent a lot of time those first few months just presenting to community partners. Um, so Meals on Wheels, Area Agency on Aging, PACE programs, social workers, etc. And those are the majority of our referral partners today. Um, so social workers at Michigan Medicine or and now it's like spread even more where family members will just hear about us and give us a call and ask for their loved one to be put on our list. So it has spread a lot. And that's part of the reason our wait list is so lengthy now. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, um, I don't know who had their hand up first. I apologize. Phyllis did. I'm not sure if Phyllis or Elizabeth. Um, thanks. I, I love this. This concept is just wonderful. Um, I'm a great fan of intergenerational projects of any kind. <clears throat> I'm wondering, um, do you ever have um, either uh, consultations with the, the students as they go through their experience or do they have group interaction um, from time to time so they learn from each other? Yeah, that's a great question, Phyllis. So I would say we have three categories of students. Um, one is just a general volunteer. They're looking for hours, resume builder, et cetera. Um, and then the other two categories are interns. So our interns need an X amount of hours each week, typically around 15 to 20. And then the last category is students who participate through their coursework with their professor. So Lori's hands is built into the coursework. So I would say all three categories have access to me as their supervisor. Um, as things come up, if you know they're struggling with something, I'm available to them to provide that mentorship and supervision. Um, one of the really cool parts of our program is the two students being paired together. Oftentimes they'll carpool and then, you know, on the way home, they just naturally happen to talk about what happened and their perspectives and they really do help each other learn and, um, okay. you know, further that education. And then, of course, in the classroom, when it's incorporated with their professor, their professors will have assignments and group reflections and all of that. So there is a lot of conversations with the students to even further enhance their growing and learning. Great. Good luck. I think it's Thank you so well. much. Yeah, Elizabeth. I think Brenda was next. Oh, I just wanted to let you know that I just signed up on your website to get your oh. emails. Awesome. Nice website. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I definitely anyone who's on the call or, you know, even participants in the audience. Um, our website is lauriehands.org and you can learn more about our program. There's a lot of recent media that we've had here in Michigan, which is exciting. So reading articles about our program um, and signing up for like our newsletters and just keeping mm -hmm. updated on what we're doing. So thank you for bringing that up, Brenda. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Elizabeth. I have two questions. First of all, if you could expand a bit on the kinds of tasks and interactions the students are having. And secondly, obviously this is a time limited experience for the student, either because of their internship is time limited or students graduate and go on to the mm -hmm. world. So what happens when you have somebody who's been getting services and the students age out? What kind of handoff do you have? Perfect. Yeah, I can. I'll speak to the first one and then move on to the second question. So we break our um, like categories of what the students do into five main categories. And when I enroll a client, I'll ask them what their top goals are. So each client, of course, has different needs. Um, so we really want to cater this experience to what they're looking for. 
So those five categories, the first one is increasing their social support. Um, and I would say this is definitely a, a top um, a top category for almost every older adult that we work with. Um, so just increasing their companionship and social support. The next category is improving their physical activity. So the students will go on walks with them or do some home exercises, different things like that. Um, that one's particularly popular with pairing them with like occupational therapy students or physical therapy students. Um, another category is improving their home environment. So that's where some of the light housekeeping, running a vacuum, um, wiping down counters, things like that can be really helpful for folks, um, especially when standing up for long periods of time can be hard and difficult because of their chronic condition. The fourth category is improving their nutrition. So um, the students going through and making sure there's no expired dates in their pantry or in their fridge. Um, maybe the students going grocery shopping for their clients and just improving food access in general. And then the last category is resource navigation. So connecting those older adults to resources in the community that would be beneficial for them as well. I will say, you know, each each client's different, but I would say a lot of our students touch on all of those aspects throughout their time with their clients. Um, so that's, you know, those are the five top categories, but of course they blend and mingle. Um, so for your second question, that's a great question. So students, they commit for at least a semester. Oftentimes, if they're not a senior and graduating, they'll stay on for longer. Um, and they'll stay with that same client because they've developed a relationship and a friendship. Um, we have one student in particular, Antonia, who I'm thinking of, and she has been visiting her same client, Janet, for a year and a half, like the very beginning of when we started. Um, they call each other family now. So like these are relationships that are very solid. Um, so that's really exciting that the students want to stay on even longer than their initial commitment. So as students do graduate or if they're done with participating in our program something that's really unique about our program is that the clients will stay on so it's not a temporary four month and then you're done service it is a long-term um, service for them so new semester comes new students um, enroll in our program so that client will get paired with new students so we want to make sure that we're not just coming in and providing a short service for folks, but that this is a long-term solution. So dating back to when we started in Delaware, we've had folks, clients of ours for over 10 years now in Delaware. Um, so I envision that that same outcome here in Michigan. That's wonderful to hear because so often um, interventions of any kind of social services tend to be time limited, which has always baffled me because mm -hmm. the circumstances rarely change that much. So this is wonderful to hear that that once people start the program, they can continue it if they wish. Absolutely. And that also is, um, it definitely contributes to why the wait list is so lengthy as well, because if there are new students, then we're still servicing the same clients. So we need an influx of more students to service that. So um, the wait list is long, but once you're enrolled, it is, for however long you'd like to participate. So I'd like to say it's worth the wait, though I know waiting is a challenge. Um, Taylor? How long are the visits that the students end up like staying? Is it determined by the tasks, the people, like the community member or the students themselves? So the students commit to um, one hour a week. So that's the minimum. Oftentimes if they get talking and it's a good conversation, it can go up to two hours. Um, so it just depends, um, but it's at least an hour a week that the clients and the students both sign up for and that they know they'll be getting that consistently. Um, I will say the only like caveat to that is students have really unique schedules. So, you know, Thanksgiving break, winter break, different things like that. Um, they might not be able to do the visits during those just because of the way that the academic calendar is. But we communicate that with clients and make sure that they know the unique schedule of students. Awesome. Any other questions do we feel like 
you know a little bit more about Lori's hands, I'm really excited to be invited to that town hall meeting in June. So thank you for that. Um, I'll send a follow up email with my contact information and with our website for anybody who'd like to take a look and dive in further, or sign up for our newsletter. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate all of your time this morning. Yep, I'll send you my contact information. Um, should I send it to uh, Lori's hand? Um, dot Maddie at Lori's hand dot org. Yep, it's M A D D I. Yep, at okay. Lori's hands dot org. And that'll, get, are, that'll get to you. That, that's my direct email. I would say the only confusion with that is that even though we're a very small team, there are two Maddies on our team. She spells okay. her with an E though. So if you just do okay. the M-A-D-D-I at lauriesands.org, you should get to me just fine. I'll send that information to you today so you can put it Perfect. on your calendar. Okay. Thank you, Brenda. I appreciate it. I also wanted to just thank Marie. She is um, one of our ambassador council members for Lori's Hands. So I appreciate the connection that she's made um, to get me to present to you all today. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, I will follow up, but I hope you all have a good rest of your meeting and we will be in touch, I'm sure, in the future. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Maddie. I see that one of our audience members has a hand raised. We don't ordinarily allow audience members to uh, jump into various um, parts of the meeting. But since this is a representative of Maddie's hands, I'm going to allow this person to speak for a moment. Uh, so, Zach, um, I'm unmuting you for a moment. I appreciate that. And I just wanted to thank all of you for your time. Um, if I'm breaking up, as Maddie said, I am driving home from, from Detroit, uh, visited this past week. I want to thank Marie for helping us to establish uh, our footprint in Michigan. And uh, we are very, very excited to have uh, a program in its infancy in Michigan, but sustainability is our, our number one key here. So. Uh, just wanted to thank you all for your time. And if you have any questions that Maddie isn't able to address, uh, I'm, I'm making myself available to you all. So please continue to do great work. And thank you again for welcoming us and letting us speak today. Thank you, Zach. I'm going to mute you back up again and put you back in the um, audience. At least I have you unmute. I have you. Taylor, can you switch him back to the audience then? Sorry, I don't know what happened. Yeah, he's showing up on my screen as part of the panel. Mm -hmm. um, okay, at this point, we are at break time. So I'm going to declare a five minute break and give everyone a chance to step away from their computer for a moment. And as soon as you, if you want to turn off your videos, then turn it back on again when you come back. So I know that everybody's back. Mm -hmm.
Hey, Taylor. Hi. Hi. Something came up work-wise and I'll need to leave the meeting. So if you just let people know I had to go to handle something important for work. Absolutely. Good All luck right. to your, so your, long. your day. All right. You too. Have a good holiday. You too. I'm back, Taylor. Um, somehow the um, town hall, the word safety got put back in there on the agenda. Can you do something about making sure that doesn't happen on future agendas? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> well, all of the subcommittees will be different too, right? Because we're going into another year. They have to be reestablished. Right, that after the first of the year. We can leave it the way it is until the first, got it. So you don't want me on anymore? What? Who said, who said that? No, no, I'm just, I'm just asking her to remove the word safety because oh. the tables are not necessarily always about safety. Oh, okay. No, you're stuck. You're, <laughs> you're not getting away, Brenda. <laughs> How are you, Jennifer? You doing good? I'm doing, I'm doing well. Yeah. How are you, Brenda? I'm blessed by the best. <laughs> mm -hmm. Enjoying Florida, huh? Um, yes, here for a long weekend and then back in Michigan. Oh, poor thing. It's cold here. <laughs> I'll send some of that cold your way. How's that? All right. And I'll send some warm your way. Thank you. Thank you. That's really was a good presentation, Maria. Thank you for, you know, everybody girl. <laughs> They're a really, really great group. Um, I first got involved with them when um, a colleague at Eastern was taking sabbaticals. She was supervising their their um, bachelor social worker students. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I jumped in for a semester and I just really love, I really love their program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like to see young people, like I think it was Elizabeth who said it, get involved with older adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are some that still love us. So did everyone have a nice Thanksgiving? I think we have a quorum back. So um, I'm gonna resume the meeting. If Taylor, if you could take us back off break. Thank you. Um, Oh, so we're going to resume the meeting now following our break. Uh, and at this point, it's time for subcommittee updates. So we'll start with communications. Um, communications, as you saw, we worked on the uh, annual report. And yet again, thank you to Jennifer for a wonderful formatting job. Jennifer is awesome. She has many talents. I just used last year's format, so uh, not a lot on my part. <laughs> well, you're still talented, lady. <laughs> Take the credit for it. Anything else, Elizabeth? Nope. Okay, we're going to task you um, and Taylor with getting the annual report out uh, and the draft email for everyone to use in communicating with their county commissioner. So we'll expect to hear back from you all when you're ready. Uh, what about ARPA? Who's reporting for ARPA? Um, well, 
Thank you, Marie, for updating us on the additional funds. Um, I I think it will be interesting to see and follow how they are used. We we really don't have much to say about it, but um, at least they're being used. And that's great. I have, I have a quick correction from Monica Prince. She emailed me the vote that happened in November was the the first reading the first approval and that has to go um, in front of them again for final approval in December. Um, the vote is expected to pass, um, but I had my dates wrong. Thank you, Monica. You know, the, you know the date be, for the meeting for that, which that will be taken up, um, Marie? Um, it's at the, the next meeting. Um, I think it's December 6th, yeah. So maybe we should wait and, you know, get that in there. Um, yeah, I forwarded Monica's yeah. Uh, note to me to you and Elizabeth, and then I can follow up again once it's final. <clears throat> yeah. So we should hold the annual report final until we get that date. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Maria and Monica. <laughs> um, is there anything else from ARPA? Mm, nope. I think maybe the final, re um, I don't know if we're gonna need the ARPA task force anymore in the future, but um, I think maybe one of the final acts for the ARPA committee might be to compile a list of everyone who got ARPA funding for senior pro projects um, and get that um, into our formal record. So if you could put that on your list, Margaret. Mm -hmm. Okay, next is potential millage. Who's reporting for that? Uh, we did not have a meeting in November due to the holiday. Okay. Uh, moving forward or future planning? What Same are you calling there. yourself now? Which one? What? Whatever. Planning, I think, is what whatever we call suits it. us in the moment, <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> we like uh, also did not have a meeting. Um, I think we settled on moving forward for right now, um, but we also did not have that meeting due to the holiday. Okay. All right. And then the last uh, subcommittee is town hall, and that would be Brenda. So you want to give us a report? Yes, I do. I have a I reached out to Gary Munson to confirm the date uh, for June 14th at 1 p.m. at their community center, and he's going to get back with me to confirm the date. And as soon as the date is confirmed, I will start, or we will start contacting our resources <laughs> with a date and a time. We. Excellent. I see a draft coming for those of you on that committee. <laughs> uh, okay, the next item on the agenda is report from the Board of Commissioners. And as you're aware, uh, Commissioner Somerville wasn't able to be here, but she did produce a report from the county on the um, county general fund dollars that are being spent on older adults. And I'm going to send this uh, to Taylor to disseminate to all of you in writing, but I'm just going to read what she sent me so that you can have an idea of what she said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. Um, the Office for Community Development uh, General Fund provided $63,129 in support for the foster grandparent program for the 22-23 uh, program year. Um, foster grandparent, you said? Yes. I'm going to send this all to you in writing, too, so you don't need to write it down. You'll get it. Oh. Okay. Um, she says, we are currently projecting none to minimal Office for Community and Economic Development general fund support to the Senior Nutrition Program for the 22-23 project year. The county general fund administrative match was $30,468. And we're going to need to get more information about that because I'm not entirely clear on what that means, but we'll get that to you. And then she says, overall, both programs received support from our federal uh, CSBG, which I don't know what that acronym stands for, allocation to cover excess cost. Community block grant. Community, okay, that should be CDBG. Um, uh, $114,005 estimated for senior nutrition and 107610 for foster grandparents. 
So like I said, I'm gonna forward this email to Taylor and ask her to send it to everyone on the commission on aging uh, so that uh, it can be taken up for informational use. So it looks to me like uh, just in summary that the county general fund only supports foster grandparents and senior nutrition programs uh, with general fund monies. There are certainly flow through monies from other agents, you know, other sources, but that's it. <laughs> so I guess the millage committee now has the answer to what they need to know. And uh, you can take that under advisement when you start looking at um, the merit based <laughs> question. Uh, I see that um, Dina has her hand raised, Dina. The, did she say, I don't, I, I don't know if I missed this, but um, for the senior nutrition, is that, are we supposed to take that as um, in addition to the money that comes from uh, AAA1B, so through the Older Americans Act, um, mm -hmm. money comes to the county. So is that is that yeah. on top of that or that's, that's part of it, which really isn't yeah. money that the county is spending? My understanding is that she's only providing information about general fund monies, not flow through monies from other sources. So okay. this is in addition to flow through money from, from other sources. But I, I think the millage committee, potential millage committee is going to need to take a look at this and then, you know, look to clarify to make sure that we understand it properly. Okay, that's the entire report I have from the uh, Board of Commissioners. Um, although I do have to say that apparently the link for applying for the open seats is currently closed. I'm not sure when that's gonna be reopened. Uh, I'll have to try to get information for that, about that for our next meeting. Um, under report from the chair, uh, I have, uh, am negotiating to uh, come up with a date to speak to the county uh, senior center directors about our work from the past year. Uh, I'm negotiating to set a date to speak to the Northfield Senior Center, Northfield Township Senior Center about our work for the past year and also the Ipsy Senior Center. Um, I have a date to speak at the all season senior living uh, community on January 8th at two o'clock just again to present our annual report. And uh, I am negotiating with Ashley to get on the county commission agenda for either January or February to present our annual report. Um, although I should <laughs> know that at that time we may end up having a new chair because we may have had our elections by then. And so I'll have to determine whether or not I will do that or the new chair will do that. We'll have to talk about that. And the last thing I have to report is that all videos for our past meetings are now up on our website. So Ashley took care of that and handled it very quickly yeah. after I asked her. <clears throat> Anybody have any questions? Yeah, I do. Um, when when are you going to meet at the Ipsy Senior Center? I'm negotiating dates with them. Okay, let me know. I'll join you. I had um, went to their uh, Thanksgiving potluck. It was really nice. Great. Okay, I will uh, let's see, tell Brenda. I better write that down right now because you know, hey, you might forget. Oh, I think it's a very good chance that I'll forget, considering that most <laughs> of my brain cells are stuck together with this cold. Um, okay. Um, next item on the agenda is new business. Uh, the 2024 meeting calendar. The officers um, wonder if we want to set an entire year schedule for 2024 now or whether we want to uh, maybe plan to skip a meeting or two given seasonal issues and holidays and vacations, et cetera. And so we can either set a, every first Friday of every month like we've been doing mm -hmm. a summer schedule, or we can skip perhaps January and July and um, just set the rest of the meeting. So what, what, what do people think about the whole idea? I would like to keep it Fridays because I don't do, I left that open the first Friday just for this meeting. Uh, that's my choice. And um, we can skip a meeting, like you said. Elizabeth. Especially given um, the first Friday in January, uh, is a time where people have have been very busy. I think that's a great 
meeting to skip. And uh, I agree with July, many people, especially mm -hmm. that a holiday weekend, sort of. Mm -hmm. And um, even meeting 10 times is still probably we're meeting more than any other advisory committee, I would suspect, for the county. Not that we're competitive or anything. <laughs> no. Do you like the Friday date, Elizabeth? I, you're okay with that date still, too? I think at this point, we most of us have gotten into that rhythm of keeping mm -hmm. that free. So unless somebody has a compelling reason to change, it makes sense to me. And it's Anybody easy else? It's easy for my brain to remember. Anybody else want to contribute <laughs> to this discussion or are you ready for a motion? I'm ready for a motion. So is that a motion? Um, yes, I'll make a motion to continue meeting every Friday at 9 a.m. skipping uh, January and July meeting. Can I amend that motion that we meet? The first Friday, not every Friday. Oh, did I say every Friday? I mean, you know, the first Friday. I'm sorry. No, we're going to meet every Friday. <laughs> no, every, no, the first Friday. Sorry about that. And Marie, were you supporting that? I'll support, yeah. So the motion I'll restate is that we propose to set the 2024 meeting calendar to be the first Friday of each month um, at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, Skipping January and July. Anybody yes. have any a discussion or questions before we call the motion? Okay, uh, Taylor, do you wanna call the roll? Um, I will say before the roll, Jennifer Green had to leave due to a work um, emergency. So I, we will still have a quorum if everybody passes. So, Juliet Ballard. Margo Yes. 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 Okay. Margo Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Yes. Margie Reynolds. Thank you. Elizabeth Thompson. Where's, where's the little tabs for Elizabeth Thompson? Yes. Jennifer Green is absent. Uh, Phyllis Herzig? Yes. Jennifer Hecken Dorn? Yes. Brenda McKinney? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, so we have our calendar. So our next meeting will be on February 2nd. Um, and I would like to note that at that time, we will be having election of officers for the 2024 year and remind everyone that I am term limited as chair. Um, I still will be on the commission, but I will no longer be chair after that election. So we need to know that we, um, each one of you is considering whether you're interested in putting your name in there to be one of the officers. And you have until February 2nd to make up your mind if you're going to put your name and your hat in the ring. Um, let's see. So that's it. Our next meeting is February 2nd. Elizabeth, did you have anything? You yeah, I just wanted to say that due to other commitments, I would like to step down as secretary. So this might be a great opportunity for someone to uh, throw their hat in the ring. All right. I would like to say to Elizabeth and Jennifer, thank you for the report. Our annual report. Okay. Thank you. It looks like we have reclaimed 19 entire minutes of our time for the day, which is great. Um, not that we're, you know, aiming to get done early, but since we have completed our discussion early, that's excellent. So thanks everyone. Have a happy holiday and a, uh, we'll see you all next year. All right. Happy holiday. Bye-bye.